Ethereum and Turing Completeness As soon as you start reading about Ethereum, you will immediately encounter the term Turing Complete. Ethereum, they say, unlike Bitcoin, is Turing Complete. What exactly does that mean? The term refers to English mathematician Alan Turing, who is considered the father of computer science. In 1936, he created a mathematical model of a computer consisting of a state machine that manipulates symbols by reading and writing them on sequential memory. With this construct, Turing went on to provide a mathematical foundation to answer questions about universal computability, meaning whether all problems are solvable. He proved that there are classes of problems that are uncomputable. Specifically, he proved that the halting problem is not solvable. Alan Turing further defined a system to be Turing complete if it can be used to simulate any Turing machine. Such a system is called a Universal Turing Machine, UTM. Ethereum's ability to execute a stored program in a state machine called the Ethereum Virtual Machine while reading and writing data to memory makes it a Turing complete system and therefore a UTM. Ethereum can compute any algorithm that can be computed by any Turing machine given the limitations of finite memory. Ethereum's groundbreaking innovation is to combine the general purpose computing architecture of a stored program computer with a decentralized blockchain, thereby creating a distributed single-state world computer. Ethereum programs run everywhere, yet produce a common state that is secured by the rules of consensus. Turing completeness as a feature. Hearing that Ethereum is Turing complete, you might arrive at the conclusion that this is a feature that is somehow lacking in a system that is Turing incomplete. Rather, it is the opposite. Turing completeness is very easy to achieve. In fact, the simplest Turing complete state machine known has four states and uses six symbols, with a state definition that is only 22 instructions long. Indeed, sometimes systems are found to be accidentally Turing complete. However, Turing completeness is very dangerous, particularly in open access systems like public blockchains, because of the halting problem we touched on earlier. For example, modern printers are Turing complete and can be given files to prints that send them into a frozen state. The fact that Ethereum is Turing complete means that any program of any complexity can be computed by Ethereum. But that flexibility brings some thorny security and resource management problems. An unresponsive printer can be turned off and turned back on again. That is not possible with a public blockchain. Implications of Turing completeness Turing proved that you cannot predict whether a program will terminate by simulating it on a computer. In simple terms, we cannot predict the path of a program without running it. Turing complete systems can run in infinite loops, a term used to describe a program that does not terminate. It is trivial to create a program that runs a loop that never ends. But unintended never-ending loops can arise without warning, due to complex interactions between the starting conditions and the code. In Ethereum, this poses a challenge. Every participating node must validate every transaction, running any smart contracts it calls. But as Turing proved, Ethereum can't predict if a smart contract will terminate or how long it will run without actually running it. Whether by accident or on purpose, a smart contract can be created such that it runs forever when a node attempts to validate it. This is effectively a DOS attack. And of course, between a program that takes a millisecond to validate and one that runs forever are an infinite range of nasty, resource hogging, memory bloating, CPU overheating programs that simply waste resources. In a world computer, a program that abuses resources gets to abuse the world's resources. How does Ethereum constrain the resources used by a smart contract if it cannot predict resource use in advance? To answer this challenge, Ethereum introduces a metering mechanism called gas. As the EVM executes a smart contract, it carefully accounts for every instruction, such as computation and data access. 
Each instruction has a predetermined cost in units of gas. When a transaction triggers the execution of a smart contract, it must include an amount of gas that sets the upper limit of what can be consumed running the smart contract. The EVM will terminate execution if the amount of gas consumed by computation exceeds the gas available in the transaction. Gas is the mechanism Ethereum uses to allow Turing complete computation while limiting the resources that any program can consume. The next question is, how does one get gas to pay for computation on the Ethereum world computer? You won't find gas on any exchanges. It can only be purchased as part of a transaction and can only be bought with Ether. Ether needs to be sent along with a transaction and it needs to be explicitly earmarked for the purchase of gas along with an acceptable gas price. Just like at the pump, the price of gas is not fixed. Gas is purchased for the transaction, the computation is executed, and any unused gas is refunded back to the sender of the transaction. From general purpose blockchains to decentralized applications. Ethereum started as a way to make a general purpose blockchain that could be programmed for a variety of uses, but very quickly, Ethereum's vision expanded to become a platform for programming dApps. dApps represent a broader perspective than smart contracts. A dApp is, at the very least, a smart contract and a web user interface. More broadly, a dApp is a web application that is built on top of open, decentralized, peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure services. A dApp is composed of at least smart contracts on a blockchain and a web front-end user interface. In addition, many dApps include other decentralized components, such as a decentralized storage protocol and platform and a decentralized messaging protocol and platform. The third age of the internet. In 2004, the term Web 2.0 came to prominence, describing an evolution of the web toward user-generated content, responsive interfaces, and interactivity. Web 2.0 is not a technical specification, but rather a term describing the new focus of web applications. The concept of dApps is meant to take the World Wide Web to its next natural evolutionary stage, introducing decentralization with peer-to-peer -peer protocols into every aspect of a web application. The term used to describe this evolution is Web3, meaning the third version of the web. First proposed by Dr. Gavin Wood, Web3 represents a new vision and focus for web applications, from centrally owned and managed applications to applications built on decentralized protocols. In later chapters, we will explore the Ethereum Web3.js JavaScript library which bridges JavaScript applications that run in your browser with the Ethereum blockchain. The web3.js library also includes an interface to a P2P storage network called Swarm and a P2P messaging service called Whisper. With these three components included in a JavaScript library running in your browser, developers have a full application development suite that allows them to build Web3D apps. Ethereum's development culture. So far, we have talked about how Ethereum's goals and technology differ from those of other blockchains that preceded it, like Bitcoin. Ethereum also has a very different development culture. In Bitcoin, development is guided by conservative principles. All changes are carefully studied to ensure that none of the existing systems are disrupted. For the most part, changes are only implemented if they are backward compatible. Existing clients are allowed to opt in but will continue to operate if they decide not to upgrade. In Ethereum, by comparison, the community's development culture is focused on the future rather than the past. The mantra is move fast and break things. If a change is needed, it is implemented, even if that means invalidating prior assumptions, breaking compatibility, or forcing clients to update. Ethereum's development culture is characterized by rapid innovation, rapid evolution, and a willingness to deploy forward-looking improvements, even if this is at the expense of some backward compatibility. What this means to you as a developer is that you must remain flexible and be prepared to rebuild your infrastructure as some of the underlying assumptions change. 
One of the big challenges facing developers in Ethereum is the inherent contradiction between deploying code to an immutable system and a development platform that is still evolving. You can't simply upgrade your smart contracts. You must be prepared to deploy new ones, migrate users, apps, and funds, and start over. Ironically, this also means that the goal of building systems with more autonomy and less centralized control is still not fully realized. Autonomy and decentralization require a bit more stability in the platform than you are likely to get in Ethereum in the next few years. In order to evolve the platform, you have to be ready to scrap and restart your smart contracts, which means you have to retain a certain degree of control over them. But on the positive side, Ethereum is moving forward very fast. There is little opportunity for bike shedding, an expression that means holding up developments by arguing over minor details, such as how to build the bicycle shed at the back of a nuclear power station. If you start bike shedding, you might suddenly discover that while you were distracted, the rest of the development team changed the plan and ditches bicycles in favor of autonomous hovercrafts. Eventually, the development of the Ethereum platform will slow down and its interfaces will become fixed. But in the meantime, innovation is the driving principle. You'd better keep up because no one will slow down for you. Why learn Ethereum? Blockchains have a very steep learning curve as they combine multiple disciplines into one domain. Programming, information security, cryptography, economics, distributed systems, peer-to-peer -peer networks, etc. Ethereum makes this learning curve a lot less steep, so you can get started quickly. But just below the surface of a deceptively simple environment lies a lot more. As you learn and start looking deeper, there is always another layer of complexity and wonder. Ethereum is a great platform for learning about blockchains, and it's building a massive community of developers faster than any other blockchain platform. More than any other, Ethereum is a developer's blockchain, built by developers for developers. A developer familiar with JavaScript applications can drop into Ethereum and start producing working code very quickly. For the first few years of Ethereum's life, it was common to see t-shirts announcing that you can create a token in just five lines of code. Of course, this is a double-edged sword. It's easy to write code, but it's very hard to write good and secure code. What this book will teach you? This book dives into Ethereum and examines every component. You will start with a simple transaction, dissect how it works, build a simple contract, make it better, and follow its journey through the Ethereum system. You will learn not only how to use Ethereum, but also why it is designed the way it is you will be able to understand how each of the pieces works and how they fit together and why.